What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be remaking Sean Deitch's Ultimate Underdog 442 that was so famous at Burnley and this was an incredible tactic guys you managed to win the Premier League with Everton and also find other success in different leagues if you do enjoy the tactic videos be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and also leave a comment below on what manager you want to see next so we're not going to spend too much time but we are going to have a little breakdown of Sean Deitch you should know who he is if you do watch a lot of English football. He's a fairly legendary figure, I'd like to say. Not because of the stuff that he's won, just because of the guy that he is. He's a great guy, makes a few jokes, loads of funny interviews. And his football, although it's not the most elegant to watch, it does get results, especially for the clubs that he has managed. And do you know what? The thing which I love about him is the fact that he's not afraid to play this slightly more old traditional style of football. The classic 4-4-2 that obviously he uses at Burnley might have switched up a little bit with Everton. So if you do want to see some up-to-date Sean Dyche tactics, just let me know as well. But do you know what? This was a ton of fun to make. A real traditional old school 4-4-2. But obviously we know he was a player as well. We can see here he actually started off his youth career in 1987 with Nottingham Forest. Going over to the senior career, same with Nottingham Forest. A little move to Chesterfield. Bristol City went out on loan to Luton Town, which is always interesting. Then to Millwall. Further progressed on to Watford, Northampton Town. And then that is where he sort of called it. Now, obviously, he was playing as a centre-back. And, you know... I think that's possibly why he plays such a defensive style, typically what he did at Burnley, because he knows that side of the game very, very well. Managerial career, obviously, not the biggest stint at Watford, but had a one-year stint at Watford in 2011-2012. Now, this is the main one, Burnley, and we're going to take a little bit of time to look at that team, bring back some memories, because that team was fun to watch, in my opinion, because I like, I like that sort of style, but... 2012 to 2022 with Burnley so a 10 year period and obviously it was sad but it was sad to see him go but obviously it did come to quite a poor end in in, in my opinion now if we scroll down all of here because this is the main part I did say he wasn't known for obviously winning a lot of stuff and truth be told He's not got the best win percentages when it comes to the teams that he's managed, as you can see here. But you've got to take into account, he's never really been at a, a massive, massive club. He's never had a real big budget to work with. And he's always been that manager which you bring in, um, or in my opinion, not, not that you bring in all the time, because obviously it's only now happened. But for Everton, I do feel like it's a great appointment because he is a manager who can work with a struggling side, a team that hasn't got ridiculous budgets, and a team that's in the mud. And... I feel like he can do that. He obviously, he kept Burnley up for several seasons. And although the win percentage does do him a little bit dirty, I do genuinely have a ton of respect for him. I think he is a really good manager. And we're now going to have a couple of minutes just to talk over this classic team. This is going to be the Burnley side, obviously, which he did manage. And you know what? There's just so many iconic names in here. Obviously, you're going to have McNeil and Tarkovsky, funny enough, joining him back at Everton now, which is always nice to see, you know, just reunite and it's, it's a great thing to see but Nick Pope, Taylor, me, Tarkovsky, um, Loughton, Brownhill, Westwood, Cork, McNeil, Barnes and Wood. Do you know what? No real standout players in here you know but they did put a shift in and they were always tricky to beat Um, and do you know what? I kind of miss having Burnley in the Premier League so always that sort of you know Mickey Mouse team you didn't really know exactly what was going to go on they could come out and surprise you. It's always a surprise in a hat you know you never know what you're going to get. They could always defend obviously going long a lot of the time so this was genuinely a really really it was a video I was wanting to make so do you know what I'm glad it won the vote poll and quite convincingly as well over Gray and Potter but that's the little breakdown on Sean Dyche like I said nowhere near as much detail as we've done on Will Still because I feel like Dyche is quite a well-known figure so let's go over to the tact and the tactic testing phase of the video and see how we done so then as you can see we've also got a new skin if you would like a link to the skin do let me know in the comments as well but this is a much more professional and detailed skin i love it it's really good and i'm going to show you why in a second as well but we're going to kick things off then with the actual testing and this is why so this was a very, very convincing season, by the way. 106 points with Burnley. A very, very good season. Obviously, top of Norwich in second place. It's going to be Jay Rodriguez coming in with 37 goals. Josh Brownhill, sorry, coming in with 24 assists. We score 107 goals in the division and only conceded 37. So, overall, a very, very good stat line. Um, in terms of the discipline as well, it's something we are really, really proud of. But... Uh, 42 yellow cards might sound a lot, but it is actually the best in a division. Unfortunately, one red card, which pushes us to fourth best, but 
an entire season, one red card isn't the end of the world in my opinion. But the reason why this skin is so beautiful, and let me know if you use this skin as well, um, the homepage just looks so nice. I mean, you've got all these options, this beautiful animation here is really, really good. And another reason why I'm a big fan of this is because we can actually go into the data analysis. We can have a little look here as well, but we can actually go and access it through this screen here, which isn't really any easier, but it just looks really fancy. I'm going to go into the, I'll tell you what, we'll go team attacking first. So we're going to have 2.33 goals per game. Good pass completion, considering this isn't really designed for that purpose at all. Um, going out and scoring actually more than what we were expected to score as well. The shots on target ratio isn't really a key worry for me because a lot of balls are getting played into the box. It's a lot more sort of direct approach to try and create these chances. In terms of team defending, 0.8 per game, absolutely incredible stat line, under a goal per game, which is a must in a Sean Dyche tactic, in my opinion. A decent amount of tackles um, attempted per game as well. A very, very good amount of interceptions, which is very key with this system as well. And that overall just makes the general, obviously, a more of a sort of brief breakdown of it. But, you know, 0.8 conceded per game, going out and scoring over 2.33 goals per game, you really can't complain. And, you know, we go into the squad here, as we always do. We filter by the goals. We've actually had quite a few goal contributions. 37 here, 22 here. Um, Weghorst had a good season at Manchester United, I must say. 12 here coming in for Teller. Brownhill with 11, 10 for Barnes, Vitinho with 6, 5, 4. In terms of the assists, we've got 24 from Brownhill, enjoying a very, very good season. 11 here coming in for Heladizio, 9 coming in for Vitinho, Teller with 7, 7 for Cullen, Trelinov coming in there with 6, 6 also coming in from um, Bayer, um, Goodmanson coming in with 5, Five coming in here as well. A lot of different goal contributions. And you know what? Although this tactic isn't designed for going out and scoring tons and tons of goals, you definitely do score quite a quite a decent amount. We then hop over to Everton. And Everton fans, you might want to watch because we had one of the best seasons I think I've ever done with Everton on any form of testing. And I'm going to show you the schedule as well because we weren't flawless at all. We just pretty much, you know, we got the results when we needed. Other teams did slip up, I'm going to be honest as well. But overall, we definitely deserve to win this. We also managed to win the Carabao Cup against Manchester United. And obviously, unfortunately, against Newcastle, we do fall out in the FA Cup. But do you know what? It's going to be Calvert-Lewin helping us out massively here, as I am going to show you in the detailed squad screen. But... Overall, very good stat lines as well. Um, actually not picking up the most goals or the best conceded record as well, but we were just sort of dragging out games as Sean Dyche did, um, or does currently. I don't want to disrespect the guy. Um, sort of, you know, by a goal here, two goals here, you know, very close, tight-knit games, but as long as you get the results, that's all that matters, right? And that's exactly what we've done. So we're going to take some time now to firstly go over the schedule. So you can see it's not, you know, it's not all unpretty at all. We went on a several game sort of win spree here, a draw in there, a defeat here against Manchester City. Um, Bournemouth is the only real shock defeat in here, in my opinion. Um, and the other, the other teams you do expect to lose to when you are playing as Everton. But obviously we're getting results here, you know, against Tottenham, against Leicester, against Liverpool. Um, we can go on. Wolves possibly we could be defeating. Uh, Manchester United was quite a quite a good game, to be honest. Eight-goal thriller there. We come out and beat Chelsea. We beat West Ham. You know, it's a real, real good run of, good run of results, in my opinion. The Carabao Cup final was a real good one against Manchester United. Um, who, for some reason, still have Ronaldo, even though I'm still on the database update, I'm pretty sure. So that's rather annoying, but hey-ho. Um, Aston Villa here coming in with a 2-1 win. Newcastle, quite a good side, so not too gutted about that. 3-2 win against United here. 1-0 against Liverpool. We definitely have Liverpool's number. Are they going to beat them in real life? That is today, so that's going to be an interesting one. A Man City win here, 4-1. I mean, Arsenal as well. So, you know, it's a very mixed hat of results, but we've done enough to win the title. And do you know what? It just goes to show that as long as you can sort of clinch these games, you can just get over the line. That's all that matters, and that's exactly what we've done. And if we go into the data hub here quickly, We'll do general performance for this one. 2.18 goals per game and conceding just over the one goal mark. Now, the reason why I'm happy with this is because obviously the league result anyway. And also we are Everton. We haven't got the best defense in the league. We've probably got one of the shakiest. Um, We're not favorites to win it or even come inside of the top six by a big, big margin. So the fact we've come out and won the Premier League and also done it, you know, we haven't done it ridiculously convincingly, but to be winning at full stop is a massive accomplishment. Partner on that alongside the fact of also winning the Carabao Cup, I literally have zero complaints. It's a sensational tactic and just shows how good of an underdog tactic this is. And if we go into the squad now then, 
So, goals. We're going to have 40 goals coming in from DCL, the big man up top. 30 from Morpay. Rondon with 12. Anthony Gordon coming in with 11, which I guess, you know, is a bit annoying because obviously he is at Newcastle. So, I don't know... I don't know if it's a new skin. I don't know exactly why, but nevertheless, it's not easy, not as if he come in with 40 goals. So it's not really fiddling with it too much. In terms of, obviously, Deli Ali's gone. Um, we've got a guy coming in with five. In terms of the assists, we've got 21 coming in for McNeil. 11 for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, Adrisa Gay coming in with nine. Eight coming in for Gordon. Awobi with eight. Seven for Morpe. Um, Mikalenko coming in with seven. Five coming in from Coleman. So again, we are seeing a nice mixed um, terms of assisters. Loads of different assisters. Loads of different goal scorers as well. And that's exactly what we want to be seeing. And do you know what? For a tactic, as I said, in the, literally about two minutes ago in the last test, for a tactic that's not purely meant to be doing this, not meant to be scoring tons of goals, it's doing quite a good job. Now, I had to test it with a powerhouse because I love releasing underdog tactics, but also I love playing with big teams as well. So I wanted to see if using this underdog tactic, which sometimes doesn't work because obviously it is a more negative tactic, sometimes putting a better team in it actually costs it better or sort of affects it more than what it actually benefits it. But from what I've seen from this, in terms of German success, we've actually come out and proved that it does work. We managed to win the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich over Leipzig and Dortmund, also picking up the German Super Cup. Not the best display in the Champions League, though, I must admit. And the Pockel, it would have been nice to beat Wolfsburg. I feel like it was quite achievable, so that's a little bit gut and there, but... Overall, 115 goals scored, so we are definitely seeing that attack and quality still. Only 20 goals conceded, reasonably or quite good discipline, I'd actually argue, for the yellow cards, and fantastic with the red cards, ranking us the best in the category. If we go into the data hub real quick, general performance, 3.38 goals per game. So I guess this is really going to show now, when you are using the better sides, you can easily get three goals plus with this tactic. And only conceding 0.59. So again, better the defense, better the stats. Pretty common sense. But since this is based around sort of an underdog manager, in my opinion, that's what I describe Sean Dyke as, the underdog manager. We did want to test with two sort of, you know, not as quality sides. Obviously, Everton are the underdog side. Burnley was just there. They are a very good side in the relevant division. But they were just there because it is sort of the club you think of when you think of Dyche. And I had to get a powerhouse in as well. And do you know what has performed on every single level that I could possibly wish this tactic to do. In terms of goals, we've got 53 for Mane, Muller with 23, 19 for Sane, Chupa Moting with 10, 9 for Nabry, 8 for Sabitza, Goretzka with 6, 6 for Komen, Kimmich with 5. In terms of the assists, we've got 20 for Sane, Komen with 12, 11 for Muller, um, 10 coming in for Mane, Davies with 10, 9 for Kimmich, Nabry coming in with 9, 5 for Musiala, Goretzka coming in with 4, 4, 4, 3, 2. So, you know, again, still a lot of players getting involved and Again, a very, very good season. And do you know what? I mean, we've tested it with three very, very different teams. Um, all got incredibly different players. And it's picked up some really, really good results. So I really hope you guys do give this a shot because I think it could be a really good tactic to use, especially for sort of a mid-table to underdog side. But if you are enjoying the video so far, please do leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. If you do want to watch me live, by the way, we do a lot of live streams in terms of, you know, we do live saves, we do live fantasy drafts. That's something you guys love at the moment. Basically, it's a great competition you can enter. Um, we all draft a team. It's a real, real good laugh. So do feel free to stop over on my Twitch, which you can find in the description below. And you're going to see several sort of pop-ups throughout the video of, the, of my Twitch username. So you can go over and simply just type that in. And chances are I'm going to be live. I'm going to be live a lot of the mornings, a lot of the evenings. You can catch me pretty much whenever so do come over and say hello it is going to be a blast well it's not every day you get to see Everton beat Man City 4-1 so I thought this is going to be one of the games we're going to watch as you can see there the more direct approach coming in clutch there's going to be more pay tucking in from a great ball from our left back and you're going to see that a lot a lot of more direct passes happening and that's what you can see we're going to see Patterson here actually win the ball back and in the true Burnley fashion I want you to look at this run here so Patterson's going to obviously put the ball in here and it is going to be where is he more pay here. Look at the space he's running into. And this is what you can expect to see with them. Two players in the box. They create so much, just so much danger. This Man City defense literally can't track him. As he literally drives across and it's going to be an easy ball in. And that's the beauty of having your wingers being told to obviously get the ball in the box. The fullbacks get the ball in the box. You've always got a chance of getting these goals from sort of all angles. It really is a good formula. It's going to be Gordon here playing a ball over the top into Morpe. First time. Honestly, he's a really good striker on this game. A great first time finish. It's not enough now though as we're going to see another goal being created from, look at this first time cross from Patterson all the way into Morpe. Hits it at Edison. A bit on 
unfortunate from the goalkeeper there with a the deflection. And it is going to be Calvert-Lewin that does pick up a rather easy tap-in. Now got a 5-0 win over Birmingham with Burnley. And this is going to be a good display of the goals. As again, a ball goes pretty much fizzed into the box from the wide area and Teller sort of tucks it in. Brownhill now with a ball in the box. Then set pieces coming in clutch as Jack Court gets quite an easy header at the back stick. Obviously, set pieces such a crucial part of this tactic. We win the ball back quite high up there with some good pressing, to be fair. Brownhill again from the wide areas into the central with one simple ball into Teller who taps it in to make it 3-0. We go again here with Bayer on the sort of right-hand side of the field. Oh, it's a direct approach, but do you know what? It's Burnley. We love it. It's how we play. It's sensational. And pretty much a hit and hope sort of ball into the box and it works. It's what I love to be seeing. Again, we're hitting the flanks. Are we going to see another cross goal? We are. A ball over the top, a great touch and a great finish. And honestly, guys, if you haven't seen it already, crosses on this game can be so, so fun to play with. I recommend you try this out because I love playing a different style other than the boring. You know, it's not boring, but we always are used to playing short, sweet, tiki taka. It's nice to switch it up every so often and play like this. And that leaves us with one more job. And that job is to break down Sean Dyche's Everton, or more Burnley, but we've named it Everton. Now, if you are enjoying the video so far, please do leave a like. It's completely free and it does help the channel and the video get found a lot. And if you do want to get, you know, get a bit more involved with me as well, you can join the Discord server in the description below. It's completely free and we post sort of tactics that I might be thinking of making. You share your tactics, we share saves, we discuss loads of stuff FM and also in the future there are going to be giveaways hosted purely for the Discord. So be sure to get involved in the Discord. But anyway, let's break down this fantastic tactic. So I'm going to start things off. It is going to be based around the traditional 442, as the title does give away. Now, what I wanted to do with this tactic is I wanted to try and replicate it as much as I physically could, but also make it good enough to be an FM tactic, you know, make sure that it does work and, you know, just make sure you guys do get results. So I'm going to say right off the bat, in my opinion, Possibly one of these roles here should be more of a ball winning midfielder. If I'm being honest, a 100% replicated version would sort of have a DM slash ball winning midfielder. But just for the, the sake of getting results as well, next to the box to box, we have got a DLP. Um, but this can be tweaked if you wish to. But in my opinion, if you want the results the results factor as well, as well as sort of play that not attractive, definitely not attractive, but play that Sean Dyche football, that is what you can do. But I would recommend sticking with this because it is also very good at getting results. Now, the trick to this tactic as well is with the wingers obviously they are on attack and the reason why they're not on support is because i noticed the difference instantly um they weren't forward enough they weren't really impacting the game as much as what they do when they are on attack so for me it is a much required thing especially considering this obviously built off a balanced mentality um meaning that you're not going to go into games more um you know sort of positively you're not going to go sort of you know on the front foot looking for goals right from the rip you're sort of just casual in the middle just sort of you know trying to settle into the game so this is something which you guys can definitely look to tweak as well obviously if you wish to go into a game against a slightly smaller team i would recommend going positive because the tactics more than solid enough at the back you could definitely look to go positive same as if you're trying to defend a game out you could go to cautious there's several things you can tweak purely just off the mentality alone that would make this tactic pretty much impossible to beat in my opinion in possession you want fairly narrow because they, it was a fairly narrow style pass into space overlap left and right this way you're going to see them fantastic overlap and runs especially from the fullbacks that do look to get forward and they create some real real dangers on the wide areas of the field we then go over to pass and directness and this one is going to be set to standard because if you have it like this then you just ping loose this ball you're pretty much useless balls over the top it's not much cop at all and it's a waste of possession on the tempo, you want that set to slightly higher because this is the best sort of tempo in my opinion. Um, having it on this is way too much and having it on this just isn't enough for this tactic. So to make it work, I would definitely have slightly higher. You then want mixed crosses, hit early crosses because obviously this is a Deutsch tactic. They are well known for getting that ball into the box and run at defence. In transition, you want counter press, counter, distribute quickly, and obviously distribute to the target forwards. Get the ball long from the goal kicks. None of this fancy, you know, playing out from the back style. Lump it up top and win the flick-ons. Out of possession, you want a lower defensive line and a high press line of engagement. Much more often, prevent your goalkeeper distribution, trap outside and stop crosses. Obviously a very big part of Sean Dyche's sort of style, especially when he was at Burnley. And that's going to be the team instructions done and dusted. Um, a little, little bit of detail, a little bit of explanation because there are ways you can tweak this and I love to include that in the videos. 
Going over to the player roles then, we're going to have a goalkeeper on defend, take fewer risks and tackle harder. We want a fullback on support, pass it shorter, cross more often, dribble more, run wide with the ball, get further forwards, close down more and mark tighter. The left back is exactly the same. A boat two fullbacks, both on support with the same instruction. So you only need to listen to me say it once. We then have two central defenders, both on defend, shoot less often, dribble less and hold position. And next to him is going to be exactly the same. I didn't really feel, feel like he had any ball playing defenders in that team. It was more of, you know, no real messing about at the back sort of style. So that's why we've got a central defender and no ball playing defender at all. Now on the right hand side, we've got a winger on attack less often, mark tighter, dribble more, run wide with the ball, cross more often, cross from the byline, get further forwards and stay wider. And on the left, it is exactly the same. Now, you might be asking, why are they on shoot less often specifically? Why am I telling them to do that? And especially for me, because, you know, I do sometimes like to tell wingers to shoot more often. But in Deitch's tactics, you think of your McNeils, for example. They are literally players that get further forward, do a few tricks, and they lump the ball into the box. That is their job. As wide players, they are simply there to cause issues on the wide areas of the field, get up the pitch, put the ball into the box, and hopefully one of the strikers sort of get there and taps the ball in the back of the net. And that is exactly what they've done in this. So I would recommend you stick exactly to these instructions. They have a box-to-box -box midfielder on the left-hand side on support, get further forwards, mark tighter and run from position, and a deep line playmaker on support, close down more, mark tighter, shoot less often, take more risks and hold position. We then have a deep line forward. Again, this could be used arguably more realistically as a target forward. Um, support, hold up ball, take more risks and move into channels. And then an advanced forward on attack, shoot less often, tackle harder and move into channels. So guys, that is going to be the Sean Deitch tactic broken down. It absolutely dominated the poll. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know it's been a time coming. So if you have enjoyed it, please do show some love on the video by leaving a like, subscribing to the channel. Do come over and say hello to me on Twitch, by the way. The link is going to be in the description and the pop-ups are on the screen. A lot of you guys have been coming over and getting involved. It does mean a lot, but that is going to be it for me today, guys. Do stay tuned this week because there's a lot of content coming. But I will see you in the next one.